Time's up. Let's do this. We're in for a wild night. <laughs> Welcome, 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 everyone, to episode 207 of Born to be Wild, a wild and wild adjacent Hearthstone podcast where we have fun hanging out with friends, talking about the wild and wild adjacent formats of Hearthstone and spotlighting members of the wild community. I'm your host, Electric Sheep City. It's great to be back on this beautiful Friday evening here in hot, sunny Colorado. I am joined by fellow host... Shmoopy Daddy! <laughs> Happy to be back, contributing to the pod. Do we have any housekeeping, Sheep? We do. So for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome aboard. We record this podcast live every Friday evening at twitch.tv slash borntobewildhs. And the video version of this podcast is posted to YouTube shortly thereafter. Audio versions, well, they're also distributed to all the podcast apps. So however you are watching, listening, or absorbing via osmosis this podcast today, thank you. Yes, you. <laughs> I felt you get closer to the recording device, even though you don't currently have a camera that's operational. <laughs> no, I, I, I Content totally did it. <laughs> movie <laughs> daddy there before we get into the main topic of the show tonight i'd like to say a quick thank you to shakuna and the other patrons of our show your support means the world to us if you enjoy this content please like subscribe and comment on this vid video on youtube another simple way so what the show is to leave a review on your podcast platform of choice if you're watching live on twitch if you've got some awesome emotes that you can unlock by subscribing to the channel this is free if you use amazon prime finally if you'd like to support the show financially, you can join our Patreon for as little as $1 per month. We have some channels in the Discord that are unlocked by subscribing to the Patreon, where you can see how the show comes together each week. Check it out. If you'd like interacting with us personally, per, if, you li if you'd like to interact with us personally, please join our Discord, a free and amazing online community of friends all across the world who love talking about Wild Hearthstone. T links to all of this stuff and more, including our merch, can be found on the website, which is www.bornbewildhs.com. All right, Sheep, how was your week? My week was pretty great. And before I go into that, I would also like to uh, do a special thanks to new patron, Grumple. Thanks, Grumple. Grumple. Welcome ah. aboard. So, um... Last week, we celebrated Father's Day in the Sheep household on Wednesday um, instead of uh, Sunday. Sunday had a, just a whole lot of different stuff with uh, my wife's parents leaving and then not leaving. And there was there was a whole thing. So we did our Father's Day celebration <laughs> last Wednesday instead. And honestly... It it was pretty great. So um, we had the day off because it was it was Juneteenth, um, but the Lambs daycare did not have the day off. So we dropped him off, went to see Furiosa, um, which is you know a Mad Max movie. Definitely not one that we would take my toddler to. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was incredible, but you know he's not even two years old yet, so. Yeah, not yeah, a, nah. not a not quality not quality two year old uh, or almost two year old uh, entertainment yet. <laughs> not quite yet. I don't know. You like the trucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this one ha had more um, uh, motorcycles than trucks. Yeah, <laughs> you know, maybe when he hits three. <laughs> um, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So then we also went to a Juneteenth celebration in Boulder. Um, I bought a record. Uh, Queens of the Stone Ages rated R. Um, I'm just about done with my Queens of the Stone Age vinyl uh, f for the, the main main album collections, at least. Um, and then we watched the um, Men's College World Series, college baseball, and our alma mater won that game, which brought them to the finals for the first time in school history. They did end up losing the, the finals, but like... In game three, so down to the wire, only by one run. Like it, it, it was a great season. Um, I digress. 
they won that that day. And whenever we picked the lamb up from daycare, apparently he was just going around with like this huge grin on his face, like all day, just going, daddy, daddy. So like, perfect Father's Day. Perfect Father's Day. (laughs) Uh, And Hearthstone. Uh, I have broken the 4,000 wins milestone in Druid. Uh, so nice. my Druid now has 4,000 wins. Um, four, 4K w- portrait win. Yeah, right. I, I did the four laps around the track of the 1K portrait. Um, and also hit legend in our format uh, with Embiggen Aggro Druid. A, a classic, a mainstay of mine in, in particular. <laughs> Seems to be kind of doing pretty good, truthfully. Meta breaker? Ah, huh? no. <laughs> you, co- coping, coping a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. We do a little coping. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it can't be like the worst, right? Because if if the meta is slowing down and it's a little greedy, anything that is, um, you know, you did get like treasure distributor and busted stuff, right? Like, so it's mm-hmm. not like it's not like you didn't get any recent support, so. It's something that pushes the issue a little bit early. I could see getting under some decks. Absolutely. Well, especially because, and this is when aggro druid tends to kind of hit the sweet spot for me is whenever people are mulliganing for a different kind of druid. So (laughs) people are mulliganing (laughs) for something else. I'm dropping an embiggen, maybe two treasure distributor, parachute brigand, maybe two. And then a three, three or five, five patches comes out of deck. I mean, I can just take advantage of their um, typically correct mulligan choice, but incorrect for <laughs> aggro druid mulligan choice. Yeah, so. they, see your, they see your health total not change and they're just like, all right, it's combo. And then you play a card and they're like, all right, it's not combo. <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably how that plays out. Pretty much. <laughs> and then earlier this week, we received some care packages in the mail from Papa Blizzard. This this was uh, King Plush in the mountains today, just just terrorizing the the mountainside, just hanging out. Majestic. What a yeah. majestic beast! <laughs> <laughs> Truly, and you you don't see any other minions. In, in 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 the field of play, it's because they they all had less than six health, or less correct, than six attack, correct. rather. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't have an you don't have an image of the figurine that we got, right? I I, I didn't think to take one of those foolishly. Yeah, I because we got we got a really cool like whiz bang is in action, mouth agape, um, giving off positive energy as he's wildly swinging his scepter into the air. Uh, yours came whole, mine came in two pieces. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I should have taken a picture of that cause that's pretty funny, but yeah, that was big, big thanks to Blizzard for the, for the care package. Even if it's, uh, this was famously like over DMs, like a, a huge haul of labor to get this care package to us. Absolutely. <laughs> and King Plush is so cool. <laughs> Poor guy. <Yeah. laughs> and like we, we, we. we <laughs> Go ahead, sorry, Sheep. I, and I, I just didn't take Whizbang with with me uh, whenever I went on my excursion to the mountains um, because I, I heard about your trials and tribulations with your um, headless splendiferous Whizbang <laughs> and did not want to kind of chance a similar fate. <laughs> well, the best part is like I'm asking you, like, hey, does your head come off? And you're like, no. <laughs> 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 does yours <laughs> this is yours um and the best part i think is like we you had like a spoiler and you told me you're like oh man this is great you're gonna get your first blizzard care package that's themed for an expansion don't tell hydra there's a king plush in it and like <laughs> was it yesterday or two like two days ago he's just like oh man guys it's rad there's a king plush in it and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> I've known for months. <laughs> I've known for months. But he is really cool. The execution of the King Plush is oh, just incredible. Schmoopy. Oh my god. How was the rest of your week, my friend? <laughs> well, I can start the rest of my week with the Blizzard Care package because, like, I don't know. I'm I'm still goofy. Uh, I so I did do like a recording of me opening it. 
uh, which did include me testing uh, the flavor of the cardboard because, like, you know, we play wild. It, it makes sense. And so, um, like, what, chat what you, was... What do you rate the taste out of 10? Well, it, what, I, what I mentioned was, like, given the density... Uh-huh. Uh, it didn't have that. It didn't have that like recycled cardboard flavor, flavor. So I think it was in fact first generation cardboard. You guys all know the the flavor I'm talking about. You play mm -hmm. wild, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, on top of that, um, you know the, the the presentation was very Spartan. Okay, so very functional, um, which 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 makes sense. Like this was sent with a purpose. This package was sent with a purpose, and uh, and yeah. Um, you know, my chat that was asking like, Hey, can, can we buy those? Or is this like only a streamer thing? Like what, what like, cause I want that plushie. So, uh, hat <laughs> has been fielding stuff on Twitter where, where I think, you know, Martian sent a picture of his and people are like, wait, no, I, but I no, but I need that. So is Blizzard going to sell any and hats? Like, I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, I remember um, when the Skolomance Academy ones came out, I really wanted a pair of those shoes because they had Skolomance Academy shoes and I wanted to buy a pair and we, we weren't in the creator program. Right. Um, I, I don't think I was even on the podcast yet at that point. <laughs> you just um, wanted the shoes. I just wanted those shoes. And I, to this day, I, had, I have not been able to purchase Skolomance Academy shoes. Oh, con! Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, so you know, opening that up was was really cool. Um, I actually mistook, mistook like the Welcome to the Creator Program loot box a, a couple months back for this one. So it was neat finally getting this one and uh, getting getting a little of that you know new expansion uh, hype for Whizbang the Wonderful uh, right at the end of our our, our, our Whizbangy uh, you know expansion. It's like oh yeah, this one's all right. Um, yeah, my Father's Day was cool. I I forget exactly what I did because I think like I did nothing. Like I think I had time to, I think I was given time to tackle the many um, potholes uh, in my driveway. I have a stone driveway, and you might say, well, you know, that's a that's funny. If you have potholes, you should think about paving it. Well, it's about <laughs> eight hundred feet. So if it's about eight hundred feet. And I have to pave it. You're talking about essentially something like a job that's going to like, I think the rough estimate I've seen from various sources, including like people online, like Memnark, who does like, you know, actual engineering for a living mm -hmm. is like anywhere from like 20 to $30,000. So like, that's not really an option. So yeah. what I'm going to do, what I do instead is. I have them dump essentially a truckload of stone off in a giant pile, which Schmoopy then climbs to the top of and like plays on top of, but it's item four. It's just a giant pile of stone. And then I, with my wheelbarrow and my trusty shovel go out and I fill in the potholes as best I can, but we got some monsters this year. So I'm not done all the way, but my, my driveway's almost smooth enough to go 25 on. Haven't gotten there either. Paving doesn't last permanently either, Aramorn. I, I know it doesn't. I know it doesn't. You got to get it done. And like, it wouldn't even make sense to do all at once either. You'd probably want to do it in shifts so that you'd like not only break up the cost, but then you'd also have to like repave it in instance. I don't know. It's a, it's, it's adult stuff. It's adult stuff. Uh, when we get to know, I have a quad with a plow on it. And occasionally I'll share, I'll share screenshots on discord of like, uh, you know, pictures on discord of, of, of my progress through like 12 inches of snow. Um, but yeah, so I think Father's Day was mostly me tackling, I think, the driveway for most of the day, which was cool. Um, nice. In Hearthstone, right now, around like 500 with like good decks roulette. I'm putting good in quotations here because I've got some weird stuff in there like Fell Spell DH um, and Reno Rogue. And I basically have like three pages of decks right now. The first page is like, okay, these are decks that are supposed to be good. The second page are like, these are decks that like claim to be good or like tier two or tier three. And then the third page of decks is like, okay, this is like, <laughs> this is Hail Mary Copium right here. This is like the weird, the really weird stuff. And so I have it so that when I'm generating a number on stream and we're going to look for it, um, you know, it, it, it the higher the number in general, it's like, oh, what's, what are, who are we looking at here? Um, I'm finding that, uh, 
you know, enthusiasm for, uh, you know, viewer based decks and viewer based content as sort of waning at the end of the expansion. That's perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. It picks back up again, but like, you know, people are playing like Elden Ring came out with new content. People are playing Elden Ring. People are doing other things. So like, we're in like a little bit of a lull right now before we get new cards and, uh, and, and do some, some fun stuff there. So, yeah, I mean, that was, I mean, it's summer now, right? So like I'm, I am in summer mode. I am feeling more relaxed. This last week of work was really great. Um, and speaking of other new things, let's bring back a segment that's not new, but is the first time that we've done this in a long time. So take it away, sheep. Good luck, everyone, and everything you do, because you're all absolute bloody legends. And I love you all. So we had some first time legends in the Born to be Wild community. We would like to extend a hearty congratulations to Kay and Malarkey on your first time legends. Congratulations. Congrats. Yeah, and Kay's been rattling around the community for a while now, so it's great watching her finally hit legend and get that opportunity and get that legendary. Um and Malarkey, I think, was a was a if memory serves a little bit of a newcomer who kind of started asking, you know, questions in lounge, like, hey, what do we think of various Reno decks? And uh, mm -hmm. you know, kind of kind of took him to the home. I kept trying to steer him and, and steer them in like other towards other decks and being like, Well, these are better. And they're like, Yeah, he's like, Yeah, I, were they I, I'm like, yeah, I, but I hate those. So I'm I'm gonna play my decks. I'm like, Yeah, this is working. If you're at D one, you might as well punch it in. So <laughs> Big congrats to both of them. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, buddy. The classic so, picture of the talent. I love it. So we See, are that's really cool. incredibly proud of our first time legends here in Born to be Mild. Welcome to the news. The news is so good. We had some pretty kicking rad news the the past couple of weeks, and holy moly, let's let's just dive right on into it. So, um, Perils in Paradise has been announced. So on the seventeenth of June, twenty twenty four, they announced Perils in Paradise, Hearthstone's next expansion. We got a new keyword which is tourist. So for example, um, Sun Sapper Lanessa is um, a paladin card with the text rogue tourist. So rogue cards from Perils in Paradise and its associated mini set will be able to be played in paladin, not the other way around. So all, only ones that are, you know, for example, with, with Lanessa, it says Rogue Tourist on her, and she is a Paladin card, so that is the only way that that, that, that kind of only goes one way. So we've got like a, a little little graphic of all of them. It's very uh, vertical, so I'm not <laughs> putting it on our screen for our video <laughs> viewers because it would it'd be so tiny you wouldn't be able to see it. But um, Paladin goes into Rogue, Rogue to Warlock, Warlock to Death Knight, Death Knight to Shaman, Shaman to Demon Hunter, Demon Hunter to Priest, Priest to Hunter, Hunter to Warrior, Warrior to Druid, Druid to Mage, and Mage into Paladin. And then it repeats back up. So, very exciting to include those cards that uh, way. We've also got another... Um, not quite keyword, but kind of, um, which are drinks. So the example that they give um, here is Malted Magma. So Malted Magma um, is a two mana fire spell. Deal one damage to all enemies. Three drinks left. So each one of these can be drinks can be used three times. They each have um, the number of drinks remaining in the artwork, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so, that is cool. Yeah. So whenever you've got three, you see the three cups there. Whenever you've only got two, whenever you're on your last one, there's only one cup remaining. So I, I think that flavor is just phenomenal. 
Um, Schmoopy, do you want to tell us about some exciting destinations? Yes, destinations. Marin has all kinds of attractions on the island, including six special locations you'll want to visit again and again. These tourist traps even open early if you meet their conditions. So, like, um, one of the mechanics that I think um, I, I didn't initially pay attention to on release was the idea that there are these locations that will open early if you do a thing. And we've kind of like gotten used to locations, I think, at this point. And I think we've got a good handle on the balance of locations, um, given that it's like, okay, you use it, it takes off a term, you use it, it takes off a term. And we're kind of used to this cadence at this point, where mm -hmm. I think at first, um, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, like, they feel they felt like too slow on paper, right? Yeah. And then like, like it turned out to be perfect as far as like playing and whatnot. So I'm really interested to see how these go because like you're just going to be able to sort of spam them if you meet certain conditions. So for example, the one that was given is hiking trail. Discomfort a taunt minion. After you gain armor, reopen this. Uh, I believe this is for druid. Am I getting that border right? Confirmed. Okay. So, um, and druid can be used in warrior. I know we're like that's the other aspect is just like what 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 uh, can we crack anything across uh, across specific um, you know classes, but yeah so like hiking trail you could you know discover a taunt minion hero power discover another taunt minion play ferocious howl discover another taunt minion and basically use all three charges in one turn so um, interesting to see how destinations end up shifting the balance in uh, competitive play. Warrior is borrowing from Druid. They do. They actually have done a really nice job of like picking cards and functions where they could work for either class in kind mm -hmm. of a in kind of a fun way. So like since Warrior is the only class that's going to be borrowing from Druid, um, making this set not entirely, but at least having some cards that sort of fit the theme, the classic theme of both. Um, so yeah. that's that's been interesting. Not only that, but we got a free legendary. We we got Marin the Manager. Um, uh, he's personally welcoming us to the Perils of Paradise. And when you play Marin the Manager, a 7-mana 6-6, six, six, you choose from a fantastic treasure. Um, the four that were available to us are the Golden Kobold, Wondrous Wand... Uh, Tolan's Goblet and Zerog's Crown, which if you remember from the uh, Assorted Adventures, um, the Cobalt gives you, replaces your hand with um, legendary minions. It's a three mana 6-6 six, six taunt. Wondrous Wand, draw three cards, reduce their cost to zero. Um, the Goblet is draw a card, fill your hand with copies of it. And the Crown is discover a legendary minion and summon two copies of it. Uh, Marin has seen heavy play in mm -hmm. both formats. Uh, standard basically is decided to, I mean, from my understanding, most decks are, are building around it. Um, wild, it's like been an insta include in Reno piles and we, we, you know, wild absolutely loves them or hates them depending on your perspective, but he's, he's definitely seeing competitive play right off the bat. Absolutely. And of course, like you mentioned, Marin can be played right now. All you have to do is log in. And the new expansion can be pre-purchased now. Uh, either the $80 or the, um, was it 60 or 50? Uh, $50 bundles. Uh, both are available. Um, I picked up the big one. Uh, and all of these will be able to be opened on July 23rd, right around the corner. Yep. Also, in... excitement abounds or something. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> excitement does, in fact, abound. <laughs> so also in Hearthstone news and something that's coming a little bit sooner, as in it was teased earlier this week and is already in game is patch 26.2. So, of course, um, on, I think it was Tuesday, we had Circle Day, um, which just Yay. told us which is going to be buffed and nerfed. Typically, we say green and red Circle Day. 
but this one only had red circles. So there were only nerves. <laughs> it's always so, green and red circle day. Sometimes we get a band circle. But we're not gonna we're not gonna change the title of green and red circle day to green and red and band circle day. And sometimes they do an even weirder circle, right? Where it's just like they're gonna fundamentally change a card and you're like, I don't know, what does that mean? Uh, so like, you know, it's always green and red circle day, regardless of whether or not there are green and red circles. Well, this one, this green and red circle day was red everywhere, starting with Reno Lone Ranger, which, like I said, it's already in the game. Uh, this patch came out uh, yesterday on time of recording. So Thursday, the 27th. So Reno Lone Ranger went from nine mana up to 10. Yeah, necessary for standard. Um, they really don't want neutral cards from the previous set that have been powerful, overshadowing new stuff. And Reno Lone Ranger in particular has been a very polarizing card in every format that he, he's played in. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you either love her or hate him in wild. Uh, you love her or hate him in standard. A lot of people are calling this nerf a feels nerf. Um, I don't know about you, Sheep, but we could nerf him further. I think I think we can, we can get rid of uh, more of his Garbo. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've, I've always said, um, I think as a card, he feels like something that is going to be fair or at least powerful and accepted uh, a year or to two years from now. I think he, he was just too strong off jump, like just so obviously busted as, as a card that I'm surprised it's taken this long to get him to 10, but also I would prefer to see the... You know, you can keep the board wipe. If you want to poof stuff, that's fine. Keep him at eight. I just can't stand the lockout. The limit yeah. to one space a turn is just so brutal. And once he comes down, aggro has no chance of trying to recover the turn after. Um, it's never getting the board back. You might as well just leave. Um, and that just seems like, you know, personally for me, poor design and really the, the big issue. Um, I don't know, Sheep, how do you feel about this card? Yeah, I I think that I agree with all of your assessment there. Um, you know, the 10 mana slows it down. I like that. I do wish that we could develop a board on the <laughs> off turn from that. I think that that poofing everything away makes sense. The amazing Reno did that. Like it's it's super flavorful for Reno himself. Um, you know, it's been a little while since the amazing Reno, so it it being an asymmetrical board wipe and not a complete board wipe. Okay. You know, like that, that's where we are uh, yeah, now. That's fine. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. Um, keeping me from being able to develop a board on the, the following turn though, is, is where it really just kind of spirals out of control for me. Um, I think that it, if Reno was brought back down to eight, but with that restriction lifted, I think I'd be honestly happy. I, I kind of liked him at eight, um, from a flavor perspective too, because then, the person could, if it was 10 mana and they just top decked Reno, um, still get in a, a hero power. I think that made sense too. Um, keeping it at high noon. Ugh. You know, I, I think it's, I think it's at least one o'clock now, Reno. I, I don't think it's high noon anymore, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's like at, at eight, at least in wild at eight and then having your stuff blow up. That's sh that's Shadow Reaper Anduin vibes, right? Like that's yeah. just like kind of like power crept Shadow Reaper Anduin or or Twisting Nether. Like right, there's some precedents there's some precedents. I'm not saying like we can't have a board wipe early or a poofing early. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Um I, there were times, especially because the meta has changed, and I'll talk a little bit more when we talk, you know, shifts in the meta. Um I was playing Reno R Lone Ranger as essentially a Lotheb. Like I knew I was playing against a combo deck and I knew that they needed board space in order to play that combo and I would just rip Reno Lone Ranger not because I had anything to poof but because hey you get time walked. You don't get to do anything for a turn. And I think that part kind of sucks. Mhm. Mm so. Completely agreed. Well, another thing that Standard was really struggling with was the virus module from Zilliax 3000. Um, so this had already been hit once. It used to be Elusive, Poisonous, Reborn, and Stealth. Stealth has <laughs> already been removed. 
And Ew. now it's gone up from three mana to four mana. Again, this is only one of the two parts of Zilliax that you put together. Um, so if you do a uh, virus module and perfect module, you know, the, the one with divine shield, life steal, rush, um, then he costs now nine mana instead of eight. Um, are there a lot of uh, wild implication for uh, this slowing down of Unkiliax, Schmoopy? Yeah, I think so. In our format, we were tutoring him with uh, Timeline Accelerator, which mm -hmm. meant that taking him from my, our deck and then making him cost two less, he'd come down on turn six uh, and pretty much just end rogues. Now that being a turn later, turn seven, you're going to see people, I think, cut on Kiliax, at least for the time being. Maybe see some experimentation where he creeps back in. I don't know. It's a tough sell. It's a really tough sell. Playing it at nine, well, it would be nine mana now, mm -hmm. like on its own. Uh, it's tough. It's really tough, especially because we do have some, you know, more creative ways of interacting with Unkiliax and Wild than we do in standard uh like you know we have things like najak to steal it i can't tell you how many times my uh, najak has stole my own kiliax uh in the past <laughs> week or so um you know we can we can zeph into deadly shot we can do some like goofy stuff to kind of get around it um but stuff has been nerfed in standard so much that it's at a point where you know unkiliax would come down the game would end and as somebody who played pain lock to legend uh in standard uh, you know, I, I'd see Unkiliax come down and like, okay, I could try to chunk through it or I could like leave and, you know, get a higher percentage game that I had a chance of winning. Um, so I, I, I totally get hitting this. Uh, I do think it's a little sad for Wild because uh, I don't l really like seeing anti-acro tools get nerfed. But Schmoopy, you, you were just talking about how much you hate Reno Lone Ranger. Yeah, I really do hate Reno Lone Ranger, I think, <laughs> on premise of just like uh, limiting the board. Like, again... Keep the wipe. I, I just I don't like time walking the opponent the turn after. Um, yeah, this isn't really that. This is like okay, well I've just set up a really difficult taunt for you to get through. Okay, great, fine. Like that's again, that's a little bit more in the realm of fair things that we can do to fight back aggro. So yeah, sad to see this go. Definitely has wild implications. Um, you know, I, I don't think I'd run on Kiliax without Timeline Accelerator, but if a deck was doing that, I think they have to think twice, maybe even three times before they choose to do so again. Yeah, and honestly, whenever I've been playing Standard, um, as Zarimi Priest, if I don't have Amonthul to deal with uh, the on Kiliax, it was pretty much just like, scoop it, next game, like, just move on. Yeah. Um, today, um, I was playing a little bit of what they're calling a uh, tempo druid, which I think is a little silly about it because it's, it's, it's really a ramp druid and it's really a dragon druid. Um, and that deck still runs on Kiliax, um, sure. with, with no timeline accelerator to tutor and discount. Um, it does, however, have, um, ramp. It does, however, have doomkin to, not only ramp yourself, but keep your opponent from you know being ramped up quite as much as well. Um, so, Unkiliax makes a little bit more sense in that particular archetype and in that format where it's not not quite as fast as ours. So, um, good card. With the nerf, it slows it. You know, this was a standard centric nerf. This slows it down a little bit. I think that's that's what it was trying to do. Can I can I ask you a question? Yeah. How many more times do you think Zilliax is going to get nerfed? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Affirmative. <laughs> I think I I think but when Zilliax came out, I asked this question like, "All right guys, how many times do you think this is going to get nerfed?" And I think Tom Carter and I have have settled on 5. We think there's two more nerfs coming to Zilliax somehow. There's going to be some build or that, that hyper synergizes with something a deck does in standard. And whether it's like OP or just annoying, it's just going to get whacked again. <laughs> like they do, like mm -hmm. sometimes things catch nerfs in standard just because they're good, not because they're great. 
Um, and, and I just, I don't know. I have this feeling in the back of my, in the back of my mind that, uh, you know, Zilliacs might've been a card that would have been hall of famed in the past. Yeah. I, is that, is that, is that a stretch? I don't know if it's a stretch or not. Um, I don't think it would have been hall of famed quite yet because it, yeah, not yet. It's, yeah, sure. it's only been a <laughs> one expansion, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I think it would have been Gin and Baku. Yeah. I, I think it, it would not have survived the whole standard year. Right, right, right. Like, and, and just sort of been like, all right, we don't want to deal with this anymore. Um, which doesn't make it like, you know, not a good card, but I'm, I'm really, I'm going to be really curious to see how much this gets, uh, reverted. Um, upon mm -hmm. rotation which is you know a long way away from now but like i'm just i'm curious how far back they want to they want to do it because depending on where it lands like again odd card even card um probably still arguably busted um you know just be cute all right what's our last nerf for the format our final nerf is Celestial Projectionist, which used to be a 2-mana 3-2 and is now a 3-mana three 3-3. Three three. Uh, it still has the same effect. Battle Cry, choose a friendly minion, add a temporary copy of it to your hand. Um, I don't know about you, Shmoofy, but I, I wasn't seeing a whole lot of this in our format. Uh, this was a darling card for Shadow Priest for a hot minute. Um targeting the thirsty drifters or targeting a void touch attendant or targeting a shadow bomber or targeting like usually just like you know some sort of high um impact one drop i was playing it in fatigue seed lock uh as a, another way to bounce a um crystallizer and then mm -hmm. if the Crystallizer and the Celestial Projectionist are the things you bring back in the race dead, well, you just do it ultra vez. You just do it again, right? So um, I, I, I have seen it see some use. Even Shaman sniffed it for a hot minute. Again, for similar reasons. Another thing from below, another giant. It's sort of been on the periphery of like... Okay, here's my read on this card. I think it's been, I think it's been a card that's probably underplayed in our format. But given our small sample size and given the sometimes lack of experimentation in certain sectors, um, you know, it was always considered one of the worst cards in the Shadow Priest deck. But I think it, I think it's a good card. And obviously it was a menace in standard in things like Pain Lock and Zarimi Priest where you were spamming these big high target like copying effects. Um, I liked it. Reno Priest played it. For a, for a little bit, Reno played yeah. Priest play, played it and enjoyed it. Um, so it's been around. Um, not much since Titans rotated, and we had other toys to sort of slot into the flex spots. But um, it was okay. It was okay. And this nerf pretty much guarantees that we are probably not going to see much play of it at all in this format until it gets reverted. Yeah, I have tried it out a little bit in standard. And my rank suffered because of it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Celestial Projectionist was never like the, the card that felt bad whenever it happened. It was always the thing that was being copied. But all of these crimes kept on happening in standard when, you know, I, I would do like a, a zero cost drifter, Celestial Projectionist, zero cost drifter, uh, you know just pop off terms and turns in a uh, Zarimi priest or um, against me with, with the, the pain warlock. And I think there were just so many different assorted crimes that celestial projectionists just happened to like be at the scenes of those crimes. I don't know that the projectionist was necessarily the, the prime suspect, but you know, it looks like he's been found guilty. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's a sign of a good card, right? Like, I think that's yeah. a sign of a good card. If 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 you keep finding interactions to break it or make it useful, that's probably a sign that, like, oh, this card's pretty gross. Has Painlock cut it yet? I, I I don't I don't know if Painlock's cut it yet. I think you probably still run it in Painlock. And, and that's what I was thinking about for Zarimi Priest. And honestly, like, I I switched away from Zarimi Priest to the the Druid because I kept on losing to the druid <laughs> and the druid ended yeah, up the being really fun the druid's kind of rude isn't it the druid's kind of an issue i 
I thought so, and then I played it, and it was fun. So, I mean, like, there, there's always going to be a best deck, in, in my opinion, right? Um, sure. This one, it does feel a little bad to play against because of the Doomkin shenanigans, but, you know... There's always going to be a best deck if this is the one for right now. And I don't think it's too terribly egregious yet. Well, a wild adjacent uh, huge update also occurred in this patch. And that was the twist updates. So the devs comment that the overall goal of these changes is to move more heroes towards the 35 health range. This means that, generally speaking... Heroes that had less than 35 health before this patch had their decks adjusted to be weaker, while heroes that had more than 35 health before this patch had their decks, and sometimes effects, adjusted to be stronger. After these changes, we'll consider using health as our more regular tuning knob. So they mentioned that there were some effects that were also changed to be um, more powerful as well. So, um, we'll highlight those a little bit first. The first one is C'Thun's passive, I am inevitable. Um, the old one, C'Thun starts in your hand, after two friendly minions die, give your C'Thun plus one plus one. The new one, pretty much the same thing, except give your C'Thun plus two plus two, um, and after three friendly minions die. So, it takes a little bit longer, but... One one additional minion, but then double the effect um, of plus two plus two. So Cthulhu's passive was buffed. Schmoopy, I, I know you're a huge Cthulhu fan. Oh my gosh! How do you feel about the, this adjustment? Oh my gosh! So I think one of the most tilting streams I've ever had was like <laughs> one where chat just chat's just like oh let's i i said oh yeah you can you can request twist if you want to request a deck yeah or you can request twist that's fine and so i got like cthune like five times in a row and i i swear even with the 80 health um completely unplayable completely unplayable but not in a sense of like it was over turn four or five it was over over like turn 15 and it wasn't close by the time it was over but it took a long time to get there and I'm just watching like viewer account bleed away. And I'm saying to my like, what am I doing to myself? And I'm losing my I'm losing ranks and I'm losing my mind. Um This looks better. This is even better if you consider the fact that when we're gonna we I'm 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 jumping ahead a little bit. They are revamping the decks as well. Mm -hmm. And Cthune got a main deck doom caller. Right, so like you don't, you're not afraid. You have an out if you have to tempo your Cthulhu on eight. Now, you can, in fact, shuffle one back in. You don't famously have to discover one off the hero power. Pick something else because you're distracted by a chat, and then, and then have them <laughs> point and laugh one. at you, and then have them point and laugh at you seven turns in a row as you're unable to then discover another Doom Caller. Um, that was funny. So that's huge. Maybe even more huge th than that is the fact that you have a main deck ice stock of Cthulhu now. So yeah. that plus two plus two gets real thick, really quick. And when you drop down that ice stock of Cthulhu for four mana, and it's going to be like a 14 14 lifesteal taunt, I don't care what format it is. That's kind of intimidating to deal with. Um, I think since since the last pod that we did, I was doing. Uh, had I talked about doing the Cthulhu decks in Wild yet? From based on the Born to Be Wild listener series, um, like just sort of taking like Born to Be Wild listener series decks and just sort of doing it a survivor with them. Um, I think you had Cth mentioned. I think it had just happened. Okay, so Cthulhu even lock in part was good because the eye stocks were unironic threats that you could drop down that got pretty mm -hmm. large for four mana and then you know you, you put them on the end of wind fury and you're good to go so i think it's a great change Cthulhu has a chance in heck of being uh somewhat playable uh great yeah let's 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 keep her moving because there's a lot that got uh that got buffed Absolutely. So another buff was to Dr. Boom's passive. Uh, used to read, after a friendly mech dies, shuffle a bomb into your opponent's deck. Now reads, after a friendly minion dies, shuffle a bomb into your opponent's deck. And gain one armor. 
So added one armor game. Dr. Boom scheme. Add it again. Even, even more obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> now, now with even more obnoxious. Perfect. I, I always thought that um, Dr. Boom just needed a little bit more survivability to see if their opponents... Um, could draw bombs, not really for, for shuffling more bombs in, though I mean also yes, but just needed to wait for your opponent to draw more bombs. And, you know, this this may help the Dr. Boom get there. Finally, in the um, hero effect changes is that of Guff Rune Totem's hero power, Feral Frenzy. Was and still is one mana. Used to read, attack this turn, usable twice a turn. Or sorry, plus one attack this turn. Usable twice a turn. Now it reads, plus one attack this turn. Can be used three times a turn. So still one mana. You can use up to three mana to get plus three attack. Pretty kicking rad. Yep, sure. Even even druid, but like in twist. Sounds good. Yep. <laughs> yep. So... After all of these uh, deck and effect changes, the following heroes now have more health. Most of them are 35. Only Arphis still has less. Um, and Arphis has 30. So all the rest of these have 35. Alakir the Windlord, Keltha Sunstrider, Nas Dormu, the Lich King, Forest Warden Omu, Zol'jin, and Arphis. And a few of them have, have been changed to have less health. All of these have 35. Illidan Stormrage, Leroy Jenkins, Cthune, King Crush, Dr. Boom, Nizoth the Corruptor, Bran, Bronzebeard, and Guff Rune Totem. So all of the decks, with minimal exceptions, have had their decks adjusted. And, and the patch notes here don't go into the minutia of what all those, those changes are. And even yeah, if they did, they we did. wouldn't <laughs> we wouldn't be able to. Uh, no, we M wouldn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Imix tweets have some really good references if you're wanting to kind of dig into the weeds on what the decks were and where they are now. Um, like side by sides, yeah. Yeah. So all of these decks have been changed except for Archville and Rafam, Zyrella, and Patches the Pirate. Every other deck was changed wow have you done a lot of twisting since have you have you done some experimentation because like isn't arfis still flat busted <laughs> oh no is he i have not i don't, had I don't know i don't know <laughs> i okay you haven't had the chance i don't know because like i'm looking at the list and i'm like all right it might be a little bit harder to just sort of cruise through i think there's more like non-rune cards now included Mm. And it does, like, it pretty much tops out, I think, at, like, four mana. And it's still run. you still run Primus and you still run Reska. But, like, you know, it's Those not like you have any, any, you know, I, I don't think you, you, you really don't run any bombs outside of that. So, mm. like, maybe it's not Omega Busted, but, like, I'd have to... <laughs> My thing about Arphis was always like, at some point, yeah, okay, maybe the mirrors were like skill testing and whatever. They were and fun mirrors. Say, well, they were fun mirrors. I'm never going to deny that they were fun mirrors. Mm -hmm. uh, and people would say, oh, they're skill testing or it's an RNG fest. And like, I like a good clown fiesta. I just didn't like how often when I played Arphis, I was more worried about the rune of the card I was playing and less about the actual effect mm -hmm. and impact of the card on the board. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times I was just sort of drooling my way through frost, unholy, blood, frost, unholy, blood. And I won more mirrors than I lost. And I, that doesn't seal you. That doesn't, I don't know, sheep. Like that doesn't strike me as super skill testing. Um, so like, Note, I said fun, not skill testing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, well, I saw a lot of people like get on there and be like, hey, no, 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 no. They're actually really skill testing. And I think there is a skill to like navigating a clown fiesta. And, and yeah. Hearthstone players don't like that because um, I, I don't know what it is. Like I, there's like a love hate relationship between generation and Hearthstone and like players who play Hearthstone. Like 
like, oh, well, they generated five ice blocks. All right, well, yeah, but, like, you can't do that in Magic. So, like, what makes Hearthstone different from Magic if you can't, gener like, generate resources? Like, lean into the fact that it's a digital card game. That's fine. Um, so, like, people don't like, like, needing to, like, play less, you know, classical music and be more, a little bit more jazz. I don't know. Like, so, like, they don't always like the Clown Fiesta aspect. I love it. I thrive mm -hmm. on the chaos. Um, and there is a skill to that. Uh, and, like, I don't know. That's something that I think people need to be more flexible about to Hearthstone. But typically anything that has that happening all of a sudden gets written off as, like, well, there's no skill in, in discovering this. Well, uh, yeah, sometimes you get crazy discovers. And then sometimes you have to, like, make do with, you know, some really suboptimal cards and you find a synergy with it. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't well, know. and I, I think it's pretty telling that all of the heroes that had their health adjusted went to 35 except for Arphis. Arphis yeah. was only adjusted to 30. So uh, is Arphis still flat out busted? I, again, I don't know. Um, their health adjustment leads you to believe that it's still really good. <laughs> that or it, it's either, yes, it's either that or they just don't want it to be good. Mm. They want it to be at a disadvantage because there is like at this point, Arfus is like the Dallas Cowboys. There's already some like built up sentiment across the population that plays Twist towards Arfus, right? Tw Arfus is a great villain now. Um, so like people don't want Arfus to be good, I would think. They'd want other heroes to be good and not the Arfus. So um, even if it's on par with the other decks, knocking it down to 30 is honestly a good PR move anyway. Yeah. So, so. If they want Arfus to be like the Dallas Cowboys, then I guess he can't go to a Super Bowl since like the nineties. When was the last Super Bowl? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You got it. You got it, Chief. It's okay. I'm a Giants fan. We can dump on the Cowboys all night. That's great for me. Oh, I'm um, a Panthers fan. Uh and grew up in Dallas Cowboy territory. We can we can definitely let's let's, let's do it. Let's Cowboys. do it. All right, cool. Cowboy, cowboy hate party sounds great. We'll we'll do a we'll do a hate watch party sometime. I'll call my cousin JJ, uh, who is a Cowboys fan, and I'll be like, "Hey JJ, you're a nerd. Here's another guy who hates the Cowboys, and we'll just gang up on him. It'd be great." Gang gang. Um, <laughs> you wanna you wanna hop into a discussion the discussion topic? <laughs> and how? So you know we we mentioned a little bit earlier that. There have been some some new cards revealed for Perils in Paradise. We've got all the neutrals, all the mage, all the paladin, and I think the rogue as well. Um, those happened today whenever I was at work, so I didn't get a chance to look at those so much. Um, but let's start start talking about some of these cards, starting with Marooned Arch Archmage. Take it away, Schmoopy. Sure. So the next three cards I picked because they kind of stood out to me as having utility um, and more utility than people were giving them credit. So the, the Marooned Archmage is a three mana, three, three. It's it's a mage card. It's it's a common. It reads your first spell each turn costs two less. Um, and I saw people really dumping on this card and being like, oh, this card is not even playable arena. Um, I think the way you need to sort of evaluate this card, at least the way that I see it, is it's a three mana three three plus cast a spell of your choice the turn you play it. So like unless you're coining this out, you never coin this out. Don't coin <laughs> no. this out. Don't unless do you're coining it out for tempo, right? Unless you're like, okay, this is always gonna stick and like this is the thing. Um you're playing this on three. And then you're playing the first half of a first flame, or you're playing the first half of a ray of frost, or then you're playing an, infin an infinitize the magnitude, or you're playing a potion from Mixologist, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, like so, I, I I think that this card is better than people are giving it credit for. It is mana cheat. You can mana cheat things down to zero. I think anytime you're doing that in in, in wild, you need to pay attention to it. Yeah, and and if you're if the spell that you are playing costs two or more, you you just played a one mana three three. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah, or like like primordial glyph, 
Like, think of how much ma- how much mana cheats going on. Like, you play this, then you play Primordial Glyph, and then your Glyph spell was free. Um, you know, you can you can you can get up to some shenanigans. So I, I really like this card. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one I want to highlight is Mixologist. But before we do that, can we just like, you know, as a podcast, pour one out for Kazakus? Because like I don't I have any reason to play Kazakus ever again, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Mixologist is a three mana, uh, two, three neutral that reads, uh, battle cry craft, a custom one cost potion in wild towards the end of his life cycle. Kazakus was just getting picked for, um, one cost potions anyway. So they're the Kazakus mm-hmm. options, but they are, but they are attached to a, three mana two three neutral that you can play two copies of so if you really are playing against aggro and you're hard up against it um you can coin them out uh on turn two and get a a one mana deal three two mana aoe like we'd like as ben brode intended um (laughs) you could you can set that up on turn two and you don't even have to be a highlander deck you can just be a normal deck and decide to do that um i think this this card is sneaky good Especially if you have it like sort of in like an LPG type deck where you want to be generating resources, you want to be generating ways to deal with swarmy aggro, to buy time, to generate value, but um, you know you're you're sort of limited by the number of spells that you want to play because you have other things that want to hit other things. Um, coin this, get a one pot. Play Marooned Archmage turn three, get your AoE down, or summon a friendly minion that died, or give things health, or draw a card. Like, you know, like you can you can get a little bit of tempo from this, or you could apply a little bit of pressure, or um, you know, just the useful Kazakus one pots, which, you know, that was you know, so it became the point where we were playing school teacher over Kazakus because school teacher was just arguably a better card in reno priest so uh this seems like this might be either a side grade to school teacher or better because you have a little bit more control over the options and the pool being small your options are good so i like mixology and cheaper mixology just good card yeah and cheaper and cheaper um all right that's those are my two like meh cards that i think people were poo-pooing that i'm like hey these are, i think are better than you're giving them credit for don't be shocked if you see them pop up i think this card's flat busted um and i think it absolutely has implications for wild patches the pilot is a demon hunter card it is a one mana one one demon pirate but unlike actual patches uh you want this in hand battle cry mm-hmm. shuffle six parachutes into your deck that summon a one one pirate with charge when drawn holy cow um sheep uh what would you do to get this in aggro druid uh i yes <laughs> like, <laughs> so much uh let me see is is uh oh i i can't get my demon hunter cars into druid they're going into shaman rats they're going into shaman and uh okay we're summoning one ones right one mana one one pirates with charge you know what shaman has shaman's got anchored totem oh my oh my indeed uh, Shaman's got Storm's Wrath. Shaman's got Bloodlust. Shaman has ways of de- of um, handling big old swarmy boards. Um, I think Patch of the Pirate definitely goes into Shaman. And since your Highlander cards, your really important Highlander cards that are outside of like Zeph and Reno, don't care about duplicates. This sounds insane. I think Patches the Pilot goes in pretty much every Demon Hunter archetype aside from one that plays empire uh, umpire's grasp mm. and i think also on top of that you sniff it in reno dh to be completely honest with you um i know zeph and reno are, are going to be reasons why you'd play it but given that the modern highlander cards don't care about duplicates being shuffled into your deck you still have access to reno lone ranger albeit nerfed now um you still have access to um Kurtris. what's there what's his face yeah there you go Kurt, yeah Kurtris. and this has a lot of synergy across like 
anti-aggro. The Chargers don't have to go face. I I know that's a I'm sorry, sheep. I know that's a crime. Um, they can be rushers. Uh, they can be anti-aggro. Um, and if they're not, if you have hero Kurtris up, um, you can <laughs> weave in hero powers with the little buggers that get get spawned. So like I I just see this as like a pile of da- I just see this as like a pile of damage, especially if you are doing something like you're playing Questline Demon Hunter and you're running Gaslight Gatekeeper. So you're shuffling stuff in with patches. Um, somebody pointed out to me, hey, well, philosophy copies patches. Well, that who says that's a bad thing? Um, mm-hmm. And you're doing just sort of goofy stuff with him. I, I don't know. I think he's br- busted. I don't see how he doesn't dodge a nerf. I don't see how he dodges a nerf in standard. I think we just are just going to have to enjoy him. He's probably going to be a, a a card that's playable in wild. He might be a card that spawns new archetypes in wild. Um, obviously, like slots into odd DH, but he's the kind of busted card that for me, um, we kind of like look at what standard does with them and then kind of mirror that in wild and like, oh, hey, look, it's a tier two deck. That could very easily happen. I don't know. I could wax poetic about Patches the Pilot for a long time, gonna shoot, but I'm going to choose not to. Um, any 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 thoughts that you got, Cheap? <laughs> Corrupt the waters. <laughs> yeah, you could. You could do that. Uh, you do. You do run out of board space at some point. That's like a that's like a platinum MMR thing to do, Sheep. But yes, that is like that's not the worst. It's not the worst thing to do. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm gonna win with it. I'm just saying I'm gonna do You're it. You're gonna do it. <laughs> You're gonna have your what is it, bright eyed scout or whatever? No, not bright eyed scout. The 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 three mana three three that pulls a card that doesn't belong in your deck out of your deck, and you're just gonna chain those suckers, and away we I mean, go. Now, <laughs> well now, yeah. yeah. So I think he's I think he's good. Absolutely agreed. Well, one card that I am going to see a lot of as the opponent. And I'm not going to like it is Rising Waves. Rising Waves, I think, is honestly incredible. Um, It's a three mana rare mage spell. Deal two damage to all minions. If none die, deal two more. So if I'm the mage and I'm facing a wide board, Rising Waves probably deals with the majority of it. If I'm playing against um, Miracle Rogue... Oh, look, there are two, um, two big old, like, 8-8s, maybe three 8-8s. Hopefully just an 8-7 and not an 8-6. Rising Waves deals with those as well for three mana. Um, I think that Rising Waves is just great AoE. It scales up. Yes, it's, a, a you know, symmetrical. It hits your side of the board as well. But, I mean, I think it's just way too good not to run if you're running a controlling mage which a lot of mages are these days oh that keeps repeating wait does that keep repeating over and over again until something dies Uh Uh uh-huh oh that's a better card that's a better card than i thought yeah (laughs) it's a great card it's like the opposite of a defile (laughs) which is also a great card obviously oh okay 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 see i thought this card was pretty weak when you include, I was like, ah, I guess it's, it's fine. Um, I think the uh, imperfect board clears are going to make, I don't know. I think I don't love this off of the fact that there are some imperfect board clears that are going to, that's going to result in it. But like, I think it's an excellent discover and it's a much <laughs> better card now that you pointed that out. I didn't, yeah. If everything has the same health, the board's wiped. Okay. That's pretty sick, but um, I don't know. Somebody's going to try it. You're, it's going to see play for sure, even in wild. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, one that I chose to bring more because I think it's interesting than that it's good is San Castle, Saint Azel. <laughs> it's a Paladin Legendary. It's a five mana three eight elemental with rush that reads: After this attacks, turn into a location. The location that it turns into is give a friendly minion plus three attack and rush, turn back into a minion. 
And um, Leo Robles, uh, Minty Fresh on Twitter, um, one of the, the developers, um, gave some additional context to what Sandcastle does in a way that's really interesting for any sort of hand or board buff mechanics. So the attack of the minion is tied to the attack buff of the location. So if um, Sandcastle is on the left, whatever we've got, um, a Dep or a up, then it rushes in, turns into the location. All of a sudden it's giving plus four attack instead of three. If we've put Blessing of Kings on it, it's giving plus seven attack instead of three, etc. The health of the minion is tied to the durability of the location as well. So if Sandcastle rushes in, takes three damage, then the um, uh, location, instead of having eight durability, will have five. You use a durability from the location, goes down to four. That means that Sandcastle, the minion, will only have four health. Um, Additionally, also worth noting, if you attack, use the location, then attack again, then the location itself will be closed, which I thought was also an interesting kind of wrinkle there. Um, yeah, without that, it would be basically popping off infinitely. I uh -huh. think is the is the issue. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so where I think this is really exciting is of course in uh hand buff paladin schmoopy you, you got me into that um what a, a, a few metas ago at least um <laughs> that was badlands when we were still allowed to have deputization aura i think yeah so obviously we're not running dep aura but um if we're buffing our hand and we are attacking to clear off a taunt and then giving a bluegill warrior plus seven attack and that bluegill warrior has already been buffed uh, there's some possibility there i it needs more more help than just that but but i think this is one piece of the puzzle of hand buff paladin potentially making a resurgence uh I, it's funny i haven't picked out like the cards that people have been saying were busted aside from patches with the, like the three or like oh well let's pick three cards and I'm like, because uh, like I don't really pay attention to new cards because I like being surprised now. Um, and so, uh, but one of the cards I did pay attention to. Um, everybody that I've talked to says this card's busted, sheep. Like this kiss oh, card. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, this is the ones that's like, wait, is this just like gross? Um, it is five mana, which is a lot, but at the same time, it's uh, it's functionally giving like a minion. It's functionally has charge because once it rushes in once, you know, it's like, um, what's the, what's the, what's the warrior weapon? Um, Remornia? Mm, the living it's blade. Very, yeah. Yes. It's very Remornia, um, vibes to it. Yeah. Uh, and so like, that's sort of, I think the context that we have to think about it in. No, this, this looks good to me as like, you're right. It definitely goes in hand buff. I think it'd be fine in Reno Paladin. Yeah. Uh, not a sentence I thought I'd be, you know, uttering. Uh, <laughs> last last expansion, but yeah, I think it goes fine. Arena pal, I think it's just going to go under the like the guise of like, hey, look, good, good, good paladin card. Um, and even at five mana, like good paladin card gets play. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's good. Absolutely, good cards. Paladin seems like a good home. And uh, last and probably least is a card that I find really interesting, but not particularly powerful, but I'm going to play it. And that is Adaptive Amalgam. It's a one mana, one, two amalgam. So all, all uh, minion types. This has all minion types. I don't know why it specifies that in the card text as well, but it does. Death Rattle, shuffle this into your deck. It keeps any enchantments. You know what I've been playing a lot of lately? Embiggen Druid. You know what Embiggen Druid kind of really likes to have? <laughs> one mana uh, pirates. <laughs> one mana <laughs> pirates, yeah. <laughs> and honestly, one mana beasts as well, because we run the um, one mana one one, uh, dis uh, either draw a beast or discover a beast. And oh, okay, so, sure. so we 
we can play that to pull a pirate out slash beast, pull a beast out slash pirate, play it. If we've played in big and first, then it's a little bit bigger. And then, you know, I tend to deck out pretty easily in that deck. So having some sort of reload, it's not great reload. Uh, again, I don't think it's good, but I think I'm going to play it. Um, Adaptive Amalgam just just gives us another another thing to to continue to play into the late game. Hopefully, that's been buffed by Embiggen, of course. So, Adaptive Amalgam, I think, is an interesting card. I don't think it's a good card, but it it it's funny. It, it's fun. I've, I've seen this referred to as King's Bane Amalgam. Um, <laughs> so. Okay, so so a couple things there. Specifically in Druid, we had the bottom feeder, right? It was a one mana, one three beast. Um, when it died, it shuffled a one mana, three five copy into the deck. And then when that died, it got another plus two. And when that guy died, it got another plus two. So uh, key key distinction, the bottom feeder went to the bottom of your deck rather than, than yes. shuffle as yes. well. I'm sure. <laughs> um. And there was some data for that, and so I liked it. A lot of people hated it, <laughs> um, and it and so it was like six on one, half dozen on the other. Um, like people didn't like that. The difference between bottom feeder and this card, one key distinction as well. Um, this is a is available across all classes, so. Mm. I'm seeing people try to cook with this in uh, DK. I'm seeing people try to cook with this in Paladin. It's kind of like a one mana prelate, if we remember prelate Paladin, mm -hmm. um, where like it would die, but shuffle in and keep the enchantments. And then you'd play like a big bomb, like um, you'd play Undertaker, and Undertaker would gain the prelate's death rattle. And now it was like, again, a giant value bomb thing. Why we're trying to do this in the era of the reno the ranger poof i don't know but like hey we are <laughs> sure um and so adaptive amalgam kind of feels like those vibes and so like it's it's gonna be cool it's gonna be a, a pet card i think people are gonna cook with it uh it's just um yeah i i think i think it, i i sort of echo your sentiment that like it's probably not good it's probably just funny and interesting but at the same time it is a neutral one mana pirate totem whatever you want across all classes it wouldn't shock me if it breaks into something competitive either well and, and of course whenever i was talking about it i was just like oh the, hopefully it has an embiggen buff um am i embiggen druid I, i'd kind of moved away from composting and towards school teacher because it was a consistent draw you always knew you're going to get three um you know what I love doing in Embiggen Druid? Buffing my board. If I yep. put composting on this and it gets its death rattle, it keeps that enchantment. Um, if I buff it with Mark of the Lotus, it keeps that enchantment too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it, it's just kind of two great tastes that taste great together with, with my aggro druid in particular. So pet deck, pet card. Uh, I want to give that, that little... Uh, bear, spider, you're gonna bat. Pet it. You're gonna try and pet iguana. It. I, I want to give you're it so many cuddles. Your, you're gonna make it your friend, sheep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't think it wants you. to be friend, sheep. <laughs> Let me love you, adaptive amalgam. <laughs> mm, doesn't think look like it wants to be friend, sheep. Well, we do okay. have one more discussion topic. Yeah, and I was really excited that, excited to do this last week, and then Hydra had to go all Canadian and uh, and watch <laughs> uh, and watch the Stanley Cup instead of do a podcast. Yeah, uh, I actually I don't I don't blame him for one second. I'm just I'm just having no. a lot of fun. And so um, the previous podcast we were talking about Rogue Stone and how Rogue was taking over the meta and how um, the Secret Passage class was top of the was top of the heap, and we had a tempo storm that kind of that kind of went with that. And what was really interesting was I watched in again public server 
Corbett doesn't stream anymore, but he does still analyze the wild, uh, the, the wild meta as a curiosity. And he kind of said to himself, and he, well, he kind of said out loud in general, so it's like, man, I don't agree with, with Tempo Storm at all. I think they, they really missed it if you look at the data. And so he started going through and analyzing what he was seeing using tools like Donkey. And I'll just sort of read it word for word. I did do a video on this, but uh, essentially goes, okay, um, We'll perhaps have another look at this in a couple days with most noteworthy notes. Reno Breeze continues to gain popularity close to 20% of the format now. The result, a sizable shift in the format. Miracle Rogue was previous top dog and Reno Paladin was the best rogue counter. But now, both Miracle and Paladin struggle immensely with the Priest explosion. So essentially we had like, hey... Let's have Miracle Robe war Rogue warp the format. Let's try to farm the Miracle Rogues. Okay, but you can farm the stuff that's farming the Miracle Rogues. Oh, wait. And also, it's okay at farming the Miracle Rogues as well. So, like, instead of getting a rock, paper, scissors situation, you have somebody came in with, like, I don't know, Atom Bomb, and they sort of slap your hand, right? And that's sort of what Reno Priest was starting to do to the format. Mm-hmm. Null Rogue, I call it Pack Rogue. You know, so it's the one based around Twisted Pack and getting Nulls down. It is yeah. now the dominant force within the class, and it took some time, but Null is the second most played deck in the format. Highlander decks in general keep creeping up in popularity and performance. At the same time, it's time, folks. Quest Warlock win rate is now creeping up while its population has fallen to around Reno Paladin levels. It seems we're at a Warlock equilibrium as the pre premium Highlander counter in the format. So now Questline Warlock in some circles is actually playable in theory. Um, and in, in some ways, kind of the ch a check on a greedy format. And I had an interesting like interaction with Memnark on Twitter, who's a player who's much better than me in, a, in, a, in a, an opinion that I respect. And I basically sent out a tweet that was saying, like, hey, it's great that we didn't ban Questline Warlock, because if we banned Questline Warlock, we would be policing all these greedy decks. And Memnark's point was just like, well, like, you know, ideally, this is the wrong kind of thing that we should be having policing greed in the format. Aggro should have, you know, a, a lot more, um, a lot more of a leg up, but with Renathal, that's not mm -hmm. really the case. And my point was like, yeah, but, you know, we're kind of having two separate conversations. You're saying ideally it shouldn't exist and it shouldn't be doing what it's doing. But the reality is, is it does exist and we do have Renathal. And so, like, as imperfect as the situation is, this is one of the solutions that we have. Um, and so Questline Warlock, playable. Speaking of Highlander, Reno Druid is a sleeping giant. Uh, I can really talk good. a little bit about that later. <laughs> Or now, or I'll do it later. Grotlo Rogue would be uh, Corbett's ladder of choice. Well-rounded, good into renal pile population, and a declining Miracle Rogue is a positive. Miracle Rogues is not the worst matchup, but it's also not guaranteed. Um, you can kind of scam them with a with a Plunderer turn, like you can scam any deck. But um, Knolls do make it harder. Knolls do make it harder. So Sheep, what was your thought when you were seeing this? Whenever I was seeing this, I'm still looking at the list and seeing two out of three in tier one still being rogue. So rogue still good. Secret passage, you know, rogue stone still accurate <laughs> to a certain extent. Yep. Yep. Um, but I'm seeing a lot more of a diversity in classes and archetypes in tier two. And notably in tier three, I'm seeing Miracle Rogue and Kingsbane Rogue down there, which yeah. in the Tempo Storm list, both of those were were tier one, if I recall correctly. I think I think Kingsbane went tier into two tier two yeah. Yeah. in a subsequent one, um like right after we we talked uh before. Um but but it was on the periphery of tier tier one if it wasn't straight up tier one itself already yeah. then. But tier two has a lot of, like I was saying, different diversity of classes and archetypes. So Lion Hunter, um, Reno Priest, Pirate Rogue, 
Quest Warlock, Shadow Priest, Reno Shaman. You've got your board based. You've got your aggro. You've got your control. You've got your combo. Like, I'm seeing, especially in tier two, like a really healthy meta kind of starting to to develop there with some outliers in the top and Garot Rogue and, and Null Rogue. Um, kind of running away with it a little bit. And Reno Druid, I find really interesting. And I know you have had a lot more uh, hands-on with that deck than I have. So I'd be interested to, to hear your take on it. Um, I played it a little bit and, and had fun with it, but it's it's not as much the the kind of like what scratches the the itch I was looking for while also working on grad school. So <laughs> Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, a lot of different decisions and really fun to watch though. Reno Druid, I played one Sunday from like high 1800 to the next day when I queued up, I won a couple games and I was at rank 515. Um, as far as decks go, if the format is getting greedier and the format is getting more Highlander, in my opinion, the best Highlander deck is Reno Druid. Um, mana becomes no object. You get to really, um, make a lot of hay with, uh, the m new Marin because you can, you ramp up to 10 mana so quickly that you're playing Marin and then you're also drawing stuff for free way before you should be able to do so. And then sometimes that free stuff is like, Reno Lone Ranger. Sometimes that free stuff is A&R. Sometimes that free stuff is, like, I don't know, insert some sort of combo piece that lets you find some form of lethality later. Now, the Reno Druid that uh, I initially previewed when I was sort of comparing the two reports, because at the time, um, I still, and I still believe this, I think Tempo Storm, I don't think Tempo Storm got it wrong. I think Tempo Storm reflects at a proper time and a proper place the meta being represented and a lot of times because new trends filter down slowly from the top, I think that Tempo Storm is generally very effective at predicting the lower meta and the, what's good there and what you're expecting to see there. But what Corb did was basically honed in on like the very, very top, what's happening at the very, very top and the developments there. And I don't know if it's really trickled down yet. I think it, the further I go down, I'm still going to be seeing more like normal Miracle Rogue or I'll be seeing more like just like more of the decks that that Tempo Storm claimed to be tier one. I'll still be seeing more, you know, Reno Paladins. Um but like the higher up you go, like I was just farming them with Reno Druid. Reno Druid outgreeds them. It's faster than them. There's more lethality. There's more flexibility. I can completely scuff my combo and I can still win because I have other ways of like, you know, I can, you know, brand an ETC and play both, you know, OG Alex and Lifebinder Alex and, you know, set you to 15 and then blow you away. And that's also a way of finding lethal or an OTK in one turn. I can play the long game. I can play tempo. Um, I've got a Kazakus in the ETC. It's just kind of like mana's no object and you can just sort of find a way to win with it. And the 40 health gives you an advantage against aggro because you can afford to take turns off to ramp up and then, you know, drop your Unkiliax or drop your Reno Lone Ranger. And what's funny is, is I don't, the mana nerfs are obviously going to like win or lose me some games, but of all the decks to sort of absorb them the best, it'd probably be Druid. Like you, you just sort of like eat a mana nerf by just, you know, by just gaining more mana than you need. Like I remember seeing one turn where like, okay, I was playing against a Miracle Rogue. They did their pop off and I've got Reno Lone Ranger in hand and I've also got the coin and I'm on, I'm, I'm going to have nine mana the next turn. I'm like, oh, if this was bumped up to 10, I could still play, make this play. Like it, it just, it's going to happen. Um, Last but not least with Reno Druid, and then I'll, I'll, I'll stop waxing poetic about Reno Druid, is you're running like six or seven versions of like Wild Growth. Um, you, you can kind of just sort of ramp like crazy, and you're not limited by the Highlander aspect all that much because you have so many ways to 
very quickly ramp your mana. And there's so much redundancy, especially with the gift now. The gift having wild growth at two mana um, is an interesting choice and one and a big choice that the devs made. And I almost attribute Reno Druid in large part to that choice to make wild growth two mana. I think without wild growth at two mana, Reno Druid's nowhere near this good. Um, you know, embrace is good, but like it's not it's not as good as it's not as good as um having two copies of two mana wild growth or coining Zeph on one and then you know getting wild growth to play on two. Uh, that line doesn't happen. Playing Zeph on four mana, playing, you know, getting wild growth and ramping there as well. That that doesn't happen uh without that change. And it's it's it has implications for standard too because uh, I, I saw Jay Alex kind of point this out, and I don't always agree with Jay Alex because, you know, it's Jay Alex, and sometimes he just likes to hear himself talk. But he pointed out that Druid is supposed to be, according to the devs, they're supposed to be moving Druid away from ramping archetypes. Do you remember hearing about this sheep moving like I like do. taking Druid, taking Druid and moving it away from like the ramping aspects. And mm -hmm. like, I think we said on this program, oh, well, that'd be good because you know what? So much of Druid is centered around like mana is no object, guff, that kind of thing. Um, but the best deck in standard right now is, is <laughs> abusing ramping. And <laughs> like, so, whoa. <laughs> I'm interested to see if Wild Growth stays at two for if no other reason than it's got to get nerfed because it's standard. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, in in standard, the wild growth isn't as big of an offender um, because it is basically still three mana. Because um, wild growth is only in Malfurion's gift. It's more the um, the whelp, uh, which is two mana, and then doomkin, right. which is taking the mana away from your opponent and giving it to yourself. Um, so it's kind of just the amalgamation of all of the different ramp, like. Like you said, um, in Reno Druid, we, we, you know, we have access to all of the previous cards. Um, <laughs> it's so consistent in ramp because ramp has been such a strength of the class for so long. And that's still the case in standard right now. Um, it's yeah. not nearly to the same extent as, as it is in our format, um, but it is still still definitely present and uh ramp is always powerful a uh, case in point that dragon druid tempo druid whatever you want to call it ramp druid doomkin druid um is is really powerful yeah and like you could see that play out right you can see that play out pretty easily um because you're watching games or like i was watching some games and like <laughs> poor ron mexico has like five mana and the druid has eight and then like you know oops ron has five mana again uh like it's like, <laughs> like can't catch, and the druid can't has ten. Right. <laughs> right oh, oh man uh, which is really funny because like i i remember playing doomkin because like you know it was a it was an achievements card and i don't really achievement hunt anymore because the achievements kept getting broken or the achievements kept flipping over before I could get the experience for them because they were broken and they were obnoxious to find. So I, I, quit, I quit trying to get them. But Doomkin was an achievement card. And so um, I remember being impressed by Doomkin whenever I played it. Um, I did not anticipate it being a meta breaker in standard now. And I don't think the devs did either. Uh, so, like, I, so like... <laughs> they, Keep an eye out. That might be something that gets uh, that does get get whacked at some point um, for being generally obnoxious to society. So yeah, I mean you know, meta greedy, uh, slowed down a whole lot. Not exactly rogue stone, but but sort of uh, more focused on um, more focused on value because we can solve the rogue decks. Which is why I always like it was always interesting, like being sort of upset about you know Rogue being so good. I had a tough time really getting there because like you kind of had solutions for all of them, and um, you even noted Sheep something as simple as like KB Rogue being tier three instead of tier two. Um, Kingsbane against Reno Piles has to think very carefully about whether or not you're going to apply a Silver Leaf poison. If you do. 
unless you can make sure that you get enough damage in to get the large deck before it renos, you probably lose. Because they're trying to wait for you to get to fatigue and then drop their reno. And then once they do that, they're looking to delay you while you're taking fatigue and they're breaking your king's bane. And every time you swing, you're drawing additional cards. So like against warrior, you never silver leaf. But I think it, that's starting to like branch out to against any extra large deck. You don't silver leaf because there's enough sort of inherent stall values, like inherent stall tactics that XL decks can do now that like you don't need cobalt sticky fingers to beat king's bane rogue you can just let them fatigue themselves and i don't know how many king's bane rogue players are having that sort of thought and discussion to themselves when they're playing the deck or if they're just slapping the silver leaves on there and like away we're going so um rogues countered reno and greed is getting there which means questline warlock is playing fun police and getting countered by rogue uh, not exactly, not exactly um, rock, paper, scissors, but that's the detente we're at right now. Unrelated advice with Electric Sheep City. All right, sheep. It's time to get down to brass tacks. I'm choosing to do an event. Uh, today's Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday. That's how the days of the week work. Um, tomorrow, I'm choosing to do an event. Uh, I've been invited to an event where I'm part of a 24-hour streaming event through THL to raise money for the Trevor Project, which primarily deals with um, suicide prevention in the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, a community that uh, regularly supports my streams. And so my question for you is, um, what special events and or uh, rewards should I offer to my chat for them donating to the cause? What should I, what should I plan on doing and or incentivizing uh, that makes the event special, that makes the event fun? Because I I've kind of tried to like, pull the community, my community a little bit. And, you know, I've gotten some like ideas that are either impossible or blank or straight up nothing. So anything off the top of your head that, uh, that, that you'd want me to do, or you'd want to see from me. Yeah. Um, so there are kind of a, a couple different paths we can go with this. So, um, you know, there's the like, Oh, I'm, I'm a Twitch streamer. I'm a, I'm a do this thing. Which is like, you know, shaving head or like, you know, dying hair. I'm not sure. Like if your summer started, then maybe you could do the hair thing. I'm going to probably shave my face, honestly. At like, like I've, at some, at X amount yeah. of dollar level, I will probably shave my face. Yes. I have a big old beard right now. For those of you listening in the podcast at home, that can go. It's not big old. I mm -hmm. shouldn't say it's big old. It's not my COVID beard, but it's, it's, it's several months of growth. Yeah. So, so some sort of hair, facial, or um, head hair um, <laughs> modification, uh, be it like, oh, shave off only half. That could be a funny thing if you had like a certain yeah, amount. Yeah, 100%. Well, um, yeah, I'm down for that. That's fine. Um, there are also some ideas from within the game. So, you know, this is with THL. So it's very Hearthstone centric and Hearthstone focused. Um, maybe if you hit a certain amount, you have to craft a, a well, not major domo, but a, a legendary of chats choosing in gold. Um, you know, maybe if you hit a certain amount, you have to disenchant a signature, not patches, please not patches. <laughs> patches. You're so dead. Meatball patches. You are so freaking dead. I swear. Um, I hope my energy is coming through when I say that, that I want it. I want it gone. <laughs> I want it dead. I want it dead. I want it dead. So much. So so maybe it's hey a certain amount and you have to keep meatball patches oh <laughs> instead. <laughs> um, but you know that they're, they're also the you know re revealing uh 
X, Y, or Z thing from personal life that you think chat would be interested in that you just haven't told people. I don't know what that may be. Okay, um, I, thought, <laughs> I thought you were t- like saying my feet for a second. I was just like, I don't know about that. See, I don't know if you want to go that far. I was definitely not going to go there, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> we, our our w- one of our friend friend podcasts, uh, Blizzlet, does have a uh, <laughs> uh, on their Patreon a a feet tier where if anyone oh, donates a thousand dollars a month, <laughs> then they get feet picks, <laughs> which we should not do, and you should not do. But you know what? Sometimes it's funny to know that things like that exist. Wiser words have never been spoken. And you've heard that on... Bore to be... Wild. I don't think we can top the feet pick thing. <laughs>